November is a month of change across the United States. From massive blizzards to tropical systems to severe weather outbreaks, America gets battered by varying weather throughout the month. Now, around one-third of the way through the month, what wild weather might the states expect to see in the coming weeks? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to another Weather Sphere video. For many, November is supposed to be a month of dropping temperatures, with many seeing their first freeze and first snowfalls, and we typically see snowstorms in the high plains. But so far the month has started off with intense flooding, record heat, and a major hurricane. The only major winter weather to speak of has been historic winter storm Anya in the Rockies, where as much as 54 inches of snow fell in Colorado, but snow and cold has been absent in the eastern half of the country, and it's left many wondering. Where is fall? The good news is that cold air may be returning soon, but first, let's talk about the forecasts for the rest of November. Starting off with the National Weather Service, their forecast for the month of November features warmer than normal temps across the eastern U.S., with equal chances of above or below average in the west. The east coast and gulf coast look to stay drier than average, with above average precipitation in the northern Rockies and Midwest. An active stream of moisture through the middle of the country has brought major flooding through areas like St. Louis, Missouri, and the rain looks to stick around at least a little while longer. Taking a more in-depth look, the 6-10 to 10 day outlook, lasting from November 15th to 19th, paints a very mild picture across the eastern two-thirds of the country, with cooler than average conditions in the west. A vast majority of the country, even Alaska and Hawaii, look to see above average precipitation, save for the east coast. The 8-14 to 14 day outlook, lasting from November 17th to the 23rd, paints a very similar picture, a warm east and cool west, with most of the country being wetter than average. Now, let's get into the models, beginning with temperatures. First, the European model. The time frame and anomaly key can be found at the bottom of your screen. From the 11th to the 18th, this model paints a warm picture for the entire country outside of the areas that saw snow from the latest winter storm and parts of the west coast. The ridge of warmth in the east persists into the following week, with many of the same areas seeing warmer than normal conditions. The cooler than average conditions in the west persist and even expand through the week, though not for long, as by the end of the month, average to above average temps once again dominate the entire country. Consistently, the most above average conditions in this model stay in the northern tier, though everywhere in the east and north gets their fair share. Moving on to the CFS or American model, the positioning of the warmer and cooler than average conditions are nearly identical to the European model in the upcoming weeks, though the American is somewhat more bullish on the temps being much warmer than normal. Once again, the cooler than average conditions expand into the middle of the month, encompassing most of the western third of the country, while the eastern two-thirds continue to see well above average temperatures. The CFS does not retreat the cool conditions out west in the final week of the month as the European model did, but it does retreat the warmest of anomalies to the north like the Euro did, indicating the possibility of the heat ridge finally starting to break down. The last two models only go by months instead of weeks. Starting with the Canadian, it similarly paints a warm month for most of the country outside of a few areas in the mountainous west, with the most above average conditions centering near the nation's capital. Lastly, the North American model is very similar to the Canadian, with warmth in the east and little cool weather, with any below average temps staying in the western US. Once again, the highest anomalies are centered near the mid-Atlantic and southeast. Now, let's talk about precipitation anomalies. Our CFS or American model predicts dry conditions throughout much of the central and southwestern states from through the 17th, with wetter than average conditions across parts of the east and in the northwest. The Pacific jet stream will continue to pummel the northwest throughout the month, bringing well above average precip. Moving from the 17th to the 24th, the wet conditions in the east expand into the Midwest, and the northwest stays wet. Florida and the southwest continue to stay dry through the week. From the 24th until the end of the month, much of the U.S. dries out, with at or below average precip dominating the lower 48, outside of some of the southern plains and northwest. Moving to the Canadian model, it isn't picking up on the heavy precip expected in the PNW like the other models, but it does feature dry conditions across the southwest and northern plains, as well as wetter than average conditions in the Midwest and Great Lakes. The Canadian also gives drier than average conditions to the Gulf Coast and parts of the East Coast. Lastly, 
The North American is wet across the southeast, midwest, and northwest, and gives drier than average conditions to the southwest and northeast. Finally, here are my predictions for the rest of the month. Starting off with temperatures, the west and specifically southwest have the best chance of being below average for the month, though it would not be by much. Some areas could see an average of as much as 2 degrees below average, though not everywhere in the region will. The east looks to continue to be warm, with most areas east of the Rockies being above average this November. The highest anomalies will likely be in the southeast, mid-Atlantic, and portions of western New England, where the monthly anomaly could be more than 4 degrees above average. However, some models are indicating a potential Arctic blast toward the end of the month which would throw a wrench in this forecast, which I will discuss coming up. Precipitation-wise, the east coast looks to stay dry and continue building drought, with only a few light to moderate rain events expected through the rest of November. The fire danger will continue to be high across much of New England and the Mid-Atlantic. The southwest will also be dry this month, with very little precipitation in the area. The northwest will continue to be very wet and snowy. With frequent storms bringing heavy rain and mountain snow, the region will see above average precipitation for the month. The middle of the country also looks to be slightly wetter than average, especially early, though these areas may see a dry period around week 3. Next is snowfall anomalies, and this map is a little different than normal. Areas in gray typically don't see their first snowfall until after the month of November or see no snow at all and areas in white have an equal chance of above or below average snowfall. The only area I am confident will see a lot of snow this month is the northwest, specifically in the Cascades and portions of the northern Rockies. Unfortunately for snow lovers, much of the rest of the country will see below average snowfall, as it is just too warm. The northern Great Lakes especially look to lack snowfall this month, with the only large hope being a late month lake effect snow event. There is the possibility of the extreme northern areas of these states seeing a clipper or two, which is why I excluded them from the below average region. Northern New England has a good chance of getting at least one small storm by the end of the month, so areas there could see below or above average snowfall. Finally, here is my outlook for the rest of November. Starting with the northwest, as I've mentioned prior, you will see frequent storms that will bring heavy precipitation through at least mid-month. Your temperatures could be slightly below average for the month as a whole, though you will see both above and below average periods. The southwest looks to stay dry for the majority of the month, though we will have to see if the storms in the northwest can drop far enough south to give the Sierra some snowfall. This area will be cooler than average for at least the next few days, though a warm-up is likely toward the week 3 timeframe. The western Great Plains will see frequent temperature swings this month as clashes between the cold and warm air masses will frequent this area. You likely won't see much rain in these areas, and snowfall will be limited. Much of the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. will see persisting warm weather. There isn't much cold air to speak of across the area yet, though a late-month Arctic blast around November 20th or later could happen. The middle of the country will be wet through at least the next week or so, as semi-frequent storm systems will continue to bring rain to the area. You could dry out by the end of the month, however. Much of the east coast will continue to see very dry conditions with limited chances for rain. The area as a whole will likely end up well below average on precipitation, much like last month. Wildfire danger will continue to be high, so stay vigilant. Before we end, I'll shortly discuss the possibility of that cold blast in the eastern U.S. toward the end of the month. On your screen now is an animation of how the GFS or American model thinks the scenario will play out. Starting on November 18th, one or two storm systems will move through the Great Lakes and Northeast in quick succession, bringing a small cold blast with the first storm and a much more significant cold blast behind the second system, if there's much of a storm at all. Not every model is on board with this happening, but many show at least a short cooldown. This is a map of the temperature anomalies around midnight of November 22nd, and as you can see, a large portion of the east and south are well below average, some on the order of nearly 20 degrees. If this trend continues, I'll make an update video in the near future going more in depth on the cooldown. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and comment down below any feedback you have. If you'd like to know about a certain area's weather, comment below and I'll give you my thoughts. Thanks once again, and have a wonderful day.